Okay. Let's pray, and then we will get um, get started. Father, we thank you for another day. Thank you for another opportunity to come and learn and be equipped and be prepared uh, to go out and uh, do the work of the ministry. I pray for the things that we share today. It will be useful, will help us uh, as we prepare for a life of ministry as we prepare to serve you and to serve people. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, so we were talking about volunteer management and uh, how we you know, get volunteers together, work with them, how we... Um, what are some of the challenges we face, and so on. So uh, just quickly reviewing, uh, this is lesson number eight in your notes. Um, we talked about the benefits of volunteers. There are some limitations. Uh, we also, we talked about how we set up these volunteer teams, uh, and um, so many different teams that serve in the Sunday services, the ministry teams, we talked about the hub and spoke model, how we um, arrange ourselves uh, as church staff, as pastors, as volunteers in various ministry areas, uh, how to recruit volunteers, how to you know, train them, uh, make things clear. Um, so we covered all of this. And uh, let's see, uh, volunteer engagement, uh, we talked about the volunteer and staff relations, so that was a big area where, uh, you know, how do we keep everything working together between volunteers and staff, and, um, and how do we um, oversee the volunteer performance, how do we appreciate them, recognize them, and so on. Any questions on volunteers, uh, engaging volunteers, and so on? Yes. No questions. Okay. Any questions? Did we have any questions from our online students? Any questions on volunteers and how we work and organize? All right. So we are just about to start uh, what we're calling as an internal assessment um, for uh, just looking at different areas of the church ministry. And one of the areas we're looking at is the volunteers. Uh, we are focusing mainly on the volunteers at Central. So we're doing um, a kind of um, assessment of um, all these things that we talked about, you know, like we, which we went through in the lesson, like how are, we, how are we engaging the congregation to be volunteers? How are we uh, training them? Uh, how are the volunteers working as teams? Are they comfortable? Are they happy? You know what's happening. So we are we just just started actually yesterday. Um, we said okay, we're going to do this internal assessment, independent assessment uh, of all the volunteer teams at Central, because that's our biggest uh, gathering, and that's where lots of people are there. So uh, we want to assess, basically evaluate how these volunteer teams are doing, uh, what are the problems, and how can we get better, right? So that's, so I just mentioned that, uh, that um, that's a good thing to do so that we, uh, we are intentionally checking how the volunteer teams are working, what are their problems, and, um, and we're doing it independent means, uh, okay, now, uh, Pastor Roshan is there. He, he, he's just come back in as a consultant. He's going to help us do that independently. So that means uh, if you tell our own team leaders to, hey, check on your teams, of course, they'll have a little bias. They'll say, yeah, lot. everybody's happy. And, you know, uh, but if you tell somebody from, you know, independently come and check and talk to all the people, talk to the volunteer teams, talk to the leaders, talk to others. And we, we have some criteria. Uh, we made a we, we made a like a checklist questions uh, for different areas. So you ask those questions, find out what is happening, and mainly 
the exercise is to see how we can become better. Right? So if there are problems, we should know about the problems, and then we should address the problems. We should become better. Right? So I think, yeah, I'm just sharing that with you because we just started that uh, exercise yesterday. Uh, first, we're doing it only at Central first. And then once we do that, we can, uh, you know, if needed, we can do it at other locations. But the lessons we learn at Central, we can always use for all the other locations, how to take care of the volunteer teams. Okay, let's uh, move now to uh, the next lesson. If there are no questions, uh, another important aspect of um, uh, church and ministry administration is communications, right? And of course, when we say communications, there are various levels and uh, circles of communication. One is inside the organization. That means within our church staff and our consultants, within our team, right? the communication that happens internally uh, amongst our, ourselves and communication that happens between the church and the congregation and also communication between the church and the wider global audience right so that means people everywhere else so for example right now i, I don't know the exact number but um, i'm thinking i'm thinking i don't know the exact number I, have, I haven't looked at it recently but maybe we have say about 30 or 40 thousand email ids in our mailing lists globally that means everywhere now it's not a big thing because you know literally uh, you know, or some organizations have millions of people, but that's where we are right now. So, if we want to send an email, if we want to send an announcement to everybody, we could potentially send it out to a global, a wider audience, you know, because uh, people from almost every country. Yeah, so, that's the wider audience. But then we also have a mailing list of people who are part of our congregation. So, you know, uh, who that means they are part of our church locations. Uh, that would be maybe around 2,000 some email IDs. That, okay, so we want to say, okay, these are our, our immediate people who are attending the services, and uh, we want to inform them about something. We have to communicate to them, right? And so there are different circles that we have to think about when communicating. What information has to go to whom? Okay? But we need to understand that uh, communication is so important, especially inside the organization. That means between us as pastors and between us uh, pastors and staff and between us as the team working. Communication is very important. Because if amongst us we feel that uh, if people don't have the information they need, then they won't be able to do their work well. They don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, what is going on, you know? So uh, we, we, within among ourselves, we need to have good communication. We need to move fast. We need to respond quickly and so on. And and the nice thing is that today we have all the tools we can. We have, you know, uh, we have uh, email, we have WhatsApp, all these things. So we can actually communicate very fast. So it's a good thing that if I want to, if you want to share information, quickly we can share, you know? And uh, so there is the tools, that is the advantage we have, you know, say maybe uh, before WhatsApp came and before <laughs> emails came, it all had to be, we had to have a meeting, everybody come, sit and talk. It takes so much time. Nowadays, it's very fast, very quick. So we have the tools. But even with that, with those tools, um, we have to be willing to share. We have to be willing to inform our own people, the staff, and all that. So let's talk about some of that. Right. So why is open communication important? That means letting people, keeping people informed of what's happening. Right. Uh, uh, enthusiasm. That means uh, people feel like uh, you know they they feel they're informed. They, they feel they're part of the decision making. Uh, so. Uh, they feel connected to the organization. 
uh, if they are uninformed, they feel disconnected. They don't know what's happening. Uh, there's ownership, uh, ownership of the uh, decisions, the direction in which we're going, that we're all going together. Other, some people will know, some people won't know. Um, there's alignment. Uh, people also feel that they are cared for uh, when they're informed about important decisions. And um, uh, uh, the uh, progress that can be made, you know, helps uh, inform them, helps inspire them. So all these are, you know, uh, you know, we can say like other the, the, the good things that come out of having open communication. Sorry. Anyway. All right. And so these are all the good things that come out of um, having open uh, communication within the organization or from the church to the congregation so on and uh, also the dialogue aspect of it that means giving people the opportunity to ask questions right to discuss right so when we um, so when we have our staff meetings uh, almost every every month when we have our staff meet so um, so once a month, on the first Saturday of the month, we have a pastor's meeting. So we all pastors get together. And it's for two hours, we just sit and we talk, we discuss, we share. So it's an open time. It's not like, okay, you know, you come, you sing some songs, listen to a sermon and go. No, it's not like that. It's We all sit in a circle and we are discussing things, we're talking things. Um, many of the decisions we need to make or many of the challenges we're facing, we sit down and discuss. So there's a dialogue happening among the pastors, pastoral team, once a month. Now, some months we may miss. Maybe in a year we may miss about you know one or two uh, Saturdays if there's something else happening or people are uh, not available. But generally, every month we meet. Similarly, for the staff. So we have di dialogue. So uh, the last Thursday of every month, for two hours is our staff meeting. Actually, one hour is a staff meeting, one hour is a time of worship and all that. So in the staff meeting, again, there is uh, there's some training happening. We train, we uh, we do some activity. But from time to time, we have it like an open house, meaning you ask whatever questions you want. Or in every presentation, there's time for question answers. It means on what we've discussed today, you can ask questions. We can talk about those things. You know. So it's not just one way. It, there's a dialogue happening. You know that that everybody feels. I can ask questions about what is happening, uh, etc. In the church, in the so staff, and with the congregation. Now, of course, it's not easy because there are so many people. Uh, we've tried arranging these Zoom calls where people can come on the call and ask questions. Uh, it's it's okay. It's not. I'm not saying it's a hundred percent solution uh, because obviously so many people can everybody cannot ask questions that we don't have the time for it but at least it's a opportunity that we give those who have questions can ask and uh, uh, so on right so uh, this 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 dialogue is important uh, to have these things so um, we can have two-way communication um, now when we keep our communication open, honest, and direct, uh, then we are able to build trust. Right? So uh, even within our own um, uh, church staff, uh, so depending on, you know, it's not like everything we share with the whole world. It's not like that. But the, so what our church staff needs to know, right? That communication, the information that they that's useful for them, it's open, it's honest, it's direct. You know, we we don't hide anything. Uh, it's with the church staff. You know, share with them because as a staff, we all need to know. And then what we need to share with the congregation, that's open, honest, direct. You know, keep it simple, uh, uh, and that builds trust. Right? And having that level of trust with the people you're working with is so important right and if people trust you then 
they are willing to do a lot, right? They're willing to give, they're willing to work together, they're willing to be part of the vision. If people don't trust us, then it's 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 very hard to flow together, it's very hard to do things. Now, when you're communicating with the congregation, some guidance is we want to keep it regular, but we don't want to do too much. Others they say, what every day he's sending one email, every day there's a message. They'll get, you know, it's like too much. So we don't want to overload. And we can't just keep sending emails for everything. And right? so we have to say, okay, we want to have regular communication, but don't overdo it because people have other things in life to handle. Uh, then they'll feel like we are bombarding them. Uh, and generally what we do is we will just put the information on our website or, you know, uh, keep it there. So that if people want to know, especially about events, what's happening, those kind of things, you put it there. Right? So uh, we have to be um, careful, like how much you're communicating, how many emails you're sending, uh, how many WhatsApp messages, and you can't just keep on bombarding people with information. Now, scripture. Um, uh, Colossians 4, 6. Let your speech be with grace, seasoned with salt. So you know how to speak to people, right? How you communicate. Some of the things I keep I keep on telling our pastors, our staff, is always there are two words you must never, or three words you must not never forget. Please, thank you, sorry. Three things, right? You never like these are like golden words. They're very simple words. So when you're writing emails, when you can always use please, right? Please. Rather than saying do this. Sometimes I get emails from staff and they'll just there's no please and thank you. Say, hey, change your email. You know, say please, say thank you. Right. Um, so please, thank you, and sorry. Two things, right? Uh, so that's just that's normal. That's normal how we communicate, how we follow. Um, to uh, that. and then uh, be uh, so we want to be an example uh, of believers in speech and conduct, and we don't want to be di dictatorial or domineering, right? So generally, uh, when uh, so the tone of the communication. Right? When, when we when staff, and of course I can tell them do this. I said, could you please do this? Or it'll be nice if you do this. You know, so the tone in which we come in amongst our staff, because so many emails going on and interacting. So, on. Um, so those are some important things. Um, uh, use good English, uh, whatever language you're communicating. So this is very important. Uh, if people don't write proper English, I send it back to them. Say, please, you know, work on your English and improve your English. And nowadays we have all these tools, you know, you can get your email corrected in chat GPT and send it. And I see people do that, you know, <laughs> they put it in chat, they come very nice email. <laughs> <laughs> uh, which is good, There's nothing wrong with it, because you're making use of the tools. Uh, it will improve your English, improve your uh, email and whatever that. And, and some of our staff do that. Um, uh, use good etiquette, you know, proper salutation. And, and then, you know, uh, just ac accepting people's work. You know, if somebody sends an email saying, I did this, I just reply saying thank you. Right? Now, we don't have to reply, but I just say thank you. Right? So uh, just that being, you know, when they do good work, I say, hey, good job, nice work. You know, just two words, but it means a lot to the other person that you acknowledge the work they've done. Right? So this all happens internally, you know, with our staff, with all the people working. Uh, because day to day there's, there's a lot of things happening. Um, don't command, instead you place a request, could you please do this, could you please do that. Uh, be patient with people within reason. Right, so, uh, yeah, sometimes, you know, suddenly you tell people to do something and they, they may not do it right, and so the, all those things are, you know, quite challenging. But then you just be patient, be patient, give them feedback, and uh, uh, with the, within reason, that means like if if they are just not doing their job, of course, then you have to take the step of you know uh, giving them warning and all that. But within reason, you're being patient with them, you're being kind to them, uh, and uh, uh, thanking people for the work they do, 
and uh, you know um, responding promptly. So th there's some good things that we have to maintain when we are communicating in within the organization. Now all of this is very important because what what I notice is if we do this, then others start doing it. Others in the organization start. Generally, when people come, what I've noticed is generally in in our culture generally people are not taught to say please thank you and sorry right so most communication doesn't happen like that they don't use those words uh, they don't say please or you know it's very very yeah so uh, it's something we have to you know create as part of our culture we'll be talking about it in our next lesson you want to create this part of our culture so you start doing it others will start doing it they also start saying please thank you sorry uh, and so on and then it becomes then it becomes uh, part of our culture internally as a staff and so working and um, uh, it makes it you know very pleasant to work with each other oh yeah that's point number three you know uh, please thank you sorry use that um, uh, thing. and you know when we internally right uh, one of the things i've noticed is if i am open about my mistakes then uh, others will also be open and they will feel it's a safe environment to say you've made you made a mistake that you did something wrong right so if i do something wrong or not if but when i do something wrong because it does happen um, internally i tell people oh, hey i did something wrong you know uh, for example and uh, this happened i mean it's not like i i, I uh, there have been times when I lost my temper. Um, it, it's not very common, but sometimes it does happen. Uh, I remember, uh, I think it must have been last year, right? but something was wrong with our the way our, our uh, the interaction like, between our media team and. Um, and uh, you know uh, the, the, the whole coordination of how the certain printing work had to be done uh, so we had made a policy not to print things right we want to do everything digitally because uh, like printing these uh, in invitations and all that some years back we made a decision let us try to bring it down as much as possible to zero don't print do everything digital like yeah, whatsapp hope I, you think print only if it is very necessary like these invites and all. But before that, for every event, we should print and give out these cards and posters and all that. But it's all, a lot of it was uh, wasted. But now that uh, a lot of people are moving digital, meaning on the phones and all that, so we said, hey, let us also move, let us stop printing. So we were in that, uh, we had made that decision some years back. But anyway, I think it was last year. I, I'm not forgetting now, not last year or. Anyway, I'm just trying. To... But something happened between our teams, and I was so upset. Right, and right there in in the office, I called the like the people you know, and just just like literally, you know, I would say fired them. Meaning, like I spoke to them very very strong. I said, "See, this is not supposed to be done. It's not supposed to be like this." And I was very very. So I, I really lost. So I, I would say I lost my temper. I, I, I was in there in front of everybody. I was very upset about this, and I told them, I "said This is not the way it's supposed to be done." I just we have been, you know, it's not supposed to be done. It's... So it happened. And it happened like in a matter of two, you know, one or two minutes. But after that, I was feeling so bad. <laughs> I was feeling so bad. Like I could have handled this differently right yes i was upset yes i was angry uh this is not the way to handle things uh what, what they did was not right but i could have handled myself better i could have done it differently so i was so upset with myself now this like i said it doesn't happen often it very rarely happens i lose my temper but it did happen I think last year or something, and um, so I was so upset with myself. Then I 
I so I went I was like that whole evening I was asking myself like doing like a self examination huh? why did I lose my temper why did I why could I not have handled it being calm you know just uh, yeah I was very upset and then you know there, there were a lot of reasons there's a background to all of this I'm not talking about it there's a lot of background because this was not just an incident but there were series of incidents that happened that led to this and that's why I was really upset about it um, but anyway uh, so I had to deal with myself right I had to examine myself I had to and I still have that note I, I made a note for myself it's on the phone <laughs> uh, well, how I should you know I shouldn't lose my temper that way and since that I'm in, in the office, I've not lost my temper. But that was an incident that happened last year. And um, and then the, that evening or early next morning, I sent an email to all our staff. You know? So so now what I'm doing is I'm saying sorry, not only to the few people that the people that the few people were there at that time, whom I uh, spoke very harshly with but to the whole staff even the people who are not there right because the people are working and they are working in different places and doing but I sent an email to everyone I said see this is what happened this is what I did what I did was wrong and um, I'm sorry and I am checking on myself and uh, so I I it was an open communication to everyone uh, the reason I did it is to let everybody know that hey i am accountable to you right I'm, I'm your leader but that doesn't mean i can just get away with doing something wrong if i did something wrong i'm willing to acknowledge it and and say i'm sorry correct myself and uh, be open about it that you know I, I made a mistake i did something wrong so um and this is this was like a bigger thing, but then from sometimes even small things happen. Then suppose I don't do something I was supposed to do. I send it. Hey, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. I was busy with something else. Like example, yesterday, uh, I had a counseling call at 4:30. Yeah, so I was supposed to speak at a counseling appointment at 4:30. I was just busy doing my thing, and I just for me like timing me 4:30 means 4:29. I'll start the call. And I expect people to be on the call at 29. That's how I would do it. But yesterday, I was just caught up in what I was doing, and I forgot. I mean, it's in my—it was in my calendar. Uh, just that I—I—I I, I just wasn't mindful of it, and I forgot. And suddenly, at maybe at like 4:35, the people whom I was supposed to counsel. They send me a message, Pastor, you, we connect the Zoom call, you're not, you know. Oh, then I was feeling so bad, right? Because I missed that appointment. I said, okay, just uh, so let's just, yeah, I apologize. I called them on the phone, I apologize, I forgot I was busy, something. Uh, we'll start at 445, right? So that's what's, so then to them I apologize. Hey, I'm so sorry, I was busy, I was doing something else and I just forgot, but usually I don't forget. And uh, we started the call at 445 and we went on. Right, so there are the small mistakes we make. Then I tell sorry to the people. Um, but what, the, the reason I'm sharing all this is, see, we have, we need to create that culture amongst ourselves where it's okay to be open about your mistakes, and you say sorry, you correct yourself, and if we do that, then we create a culture amongst all of ourselves where it is, it is okay to be honest at your mistakes. So much so that now, you know, our people will come and tell me directly when they make a mistake. They won't hide it. They'll come and tell me, you know, Pastor, I did like this, I did this, I'm so sorry. And that's a good thing. Because that way, they're not hiding, they're not covering up their mistakes. They know that they can be very open about their mistakes. And uh, we all make mistakes. And you're not going to be put down because you made a mistake. Right? Uh, they can't tell me directly. I, I did this. This. I, this was a mistake. I made. I'm so sorry. And so different things. But then that's a culture. And if you create that kind of communication, it's very important. 
where we are open about our mistakes, uh, we say sorry, but we also know that uh, there is you know, forgiveness and we just move on. As long as we correct ourselves, uh, we can move on. So, um, number four, when we uh, we have lots of discussions, conversations where people are free to share ideas, uh, and when we present our ideas, we we present them as suggestions. So do you like to do this? Do you think you should consider this? Rather than saying do this, do that. Only if something has to happen, then I would say, you know, please do this. This has to be done. And sometimes I do that when certain things are very important, and that's uh, otherwise we are discussing ideas. Um, so ideas are shared openly. Um, uh, do difficult matters in person, or you know, uh, if in person is not possible, then of course you do it on a phone call or a uh, video call or something. Um, so as far as possible, if I have to deal with the staff and immediate team members, where we're dealing with difficult things. Our first preference is let's meet and talk. Right? Now, of course, if people are living far away or uh, they're not available, then the next option is to do it on a call. Yeah? Uh, and uh, make conscious decisions when, when you're communicating, uh, what to communicate to whom, be clear. Um, Keep emails short. Don't write long, long emails. Usually, I don't read long emails. <laughs> I just look at it, and there's, there's so many emails I don't can't read. Um, so, if you write long emails, likely, most likely, people won't read it. Right? It's too long. And uh, yeah. Questions? Go ahead. Uh, so, Pastor, uh, in the second one, like uh, we're talking, use good. Etiquette. Yeah. So uh, we uh, like we discuss like we should be kind with people within the reason, and you have said like like if sometimes we have to be patient, but if something is going on, we have to give them a warning also. Yes. Yes. So like the term, the warning itself is like something that is not very easy. Like can't be done in a very polite way. Yeah. But also how to do it like so that the, our communication can be like uh conveyed to them like mm -hmm. okay, this is the final warning. So how to do it in a good way that they won't get uh, offended or uh, in a correct way. Because sometimes when we be very soft and communicate a warning, people won't take it that much serious. Yeah. So the Bible, you know, see, the Bible does tell us, right, that if people are not behaving properly, the Bible tells us to warn them. This is uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5. So you're doing a biblical thing when you warn people, saying, hey, you know, something is not right. You're taking actions of 1 Thessalonians 5, uh, verse 14, right? It says, uh, 1 Thessalonians 5, 14, we exhort you, brethren, warn those who are unruly, unruly Comfort the faint-hearted, uphold the weak, be patient with all. So you're patient with all, but you have to warn those who are unruly. They're misbehaving. They're not behaving properly or something is wrong. You have to warn them. So uh, basically, uh, the, the, the important thing is to be direct, to be clear, uh, and be polite about it. That means at least the first time, right? You say, hey. Uh, it depends on what it is. If it's their work, you say, "Hey, see, I uh, uh, we have gone over this. You know, we've discussed this so many times. I've shared feedback with you, but I'm not seeing any change. Uh, if there's no change, then this will be the consequence. Right? In fact, just last month, this is a month of uh, October. Yeah, so in September, we had to let two of our staff go. Like, uh, and that was because of performance, right?" Um, so, but I had already given them feedback in June, right? So, you know, I said, hey, actually multiple feedbacks, not just one, but at least two serious feedbacks before this. 
where hey, you need to be doing this. This is happening. Uh, this is what's going on, and you need to be doing this. Uh, then, but there was no change. You know, so then in September, I had to make decision for both of them, two different people. Uh, this is going to be the consequence that you you know you, you cannot continue working here at APC, uh, but you do it in a polite way, and uh, for the, both of them, uh, I, I I I said okay, see, your work will end at on, you know, we usually have thirty days notice, but I want to help you beyond that, meaning what next for you? I want to help you with that. So that means. Uh, yeah, you've been warned twice. Now the consequence is coming, which is your work is, you know, you will not be employed anymore at APC. That's the consequence. But it's not like we're, we're doing it without heart. Right? We, we have to make this decision because there is a consequence. You've not paid attention to those two warnings before concerning your work. So we have to carry out the consequence, which means we cannot work here. But we have a heart. So we will try to help you for your next stage. That's one case. Uh, you know, help them find a job, uh, whatever job that is. Another person, OK, can you we'll help you find another place in ministry? Yeah. So. When you want, you want make it very clear. Uh, explain what, depending on the situation. Actually, this is this, this is what's going on. This is where you're falling short. And uh, if it doesn't, this has to change. This particular thing, you have to do this. And if it doesn't, this will be the consequence. You know, we and uh, and then if it doesn't change, then the consequence has to be there. If you don't carry out the consequence, then they'll say this warning has no meaning. <laughs> you know, they simply say oh, the consequence will come. And uh, but then you try to be gentle as you walk through that consequence, How, to whatever you can. You know, I'm not saying we do this for everybody. In some cases, we we can't help it. You just say, you know the consequence is there. Beyond that, there's nothing much we can do. Uh, and we just leave it. All right, let me see any questions on the chat. Any questions here on the chat? Communication, uh, it's not like a, not a full lesson on communication, but just to highlight some of the importance of communication within and across outside. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, also, Pastor, like uh, we said, like we should make the room or like create that culture for people to come, not to cover their mistakes, Yeah. to uh, you know, come forward and speak it out. Uh, it's a good way, like it's a good culture, so that we know we will be aware. People will be vulnerable, but they know, like we got their back. But will it also leads to take it or uh, as an advantage? Like, okay, I did it, but if I go and say it, it will be covered. Will there be chances for it also? Because mm, mm. sometimes they do mistake, and then they'll just go and say apologies for it. It's good, but what if it's continuously happening? Yeah. So we don't let people. I mean, this is a good question. So we don't want people to misuse it, like you know, like think that hey, I can just go and say I'm sorry and everything will be okay, right? So we don't let that happen because. Okay, you make a mistake, yeah, but the we all make mistakes. That's true, but we need to correct ourselves and do better. If the same thing keeps happening, there will be consequences. So, for example, uh, recently for one of our other team members, I moved that person out of a certain project because. They were making certain mis repeating mistakes. And I realized they don't have the competency for that work. So the consequence was there. That means, okay, you can no longer be in that 
on that project. You know, you take them out. Okay, give them something that they can do. And so I, I put it as a, I, I put it as an offering in the sense that, hey, um, you know, I spoke to the person. I said, you know, um, I'm thinking of moving you out, uh, and you will be only working on this. Are you okay with that? You think about it and you tell me. So that means I didn't forcibly move the person out. I'm seeing the series of mistakes. Uh, he sees it. I know it because you know the communication has happened. I've even uh, it's all in email also. We, we communicated, so he also knows series of mistakes. I and then I said the consequence has to happen, which is you cannot continue on the project. You have to come back and do something different. But I put it in a way where in a manner that I said, would you like to you know, move to this and focus on this? You take some time to think about it and let me know. And with the next day he came back, he said yes. So he also agreed. You know? So that means if people are repeating the mistakes over and over again, like once we give them feedback, twice we give them, and they continue, then we cannot let them misuse that, right? So there'll be consequences. And the consequences are serious, like you're taken off the project or you are sometimes terminated, you know, whatever. There are consequences, but everything, we try to do it in a nice way. One more lot. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Uh, it's not related to something that we have discussed, but also uh, speaking about the context of uh, organization or the part and uh, is that okay to address some things that were not going right mm -hmm. in an in our organization but we are not the part of the team oh okay so you're saying you're seeing something happening in the organization that's not going right yeah you're not part of that team I think, uh, yeah, so it all depends. See, one is it's it, it's a good thing to address. I'm speaking generally. Yes, it's a good thing uh, to raise a flag and so on. But it all depends on the culture within the organization, right? If the organization is like, hey, you mind your own business, don't interfere in other people's thing, then you don't have the choice. You can't, you know, you can't uh, point out something that you're seeing. And that means uh, uh, the organization loses the opportunity to get that feedback. But if you have a culture that's open, where anybody can say anything about what they're seeing, any, then that's a healthy option, a uh, healthy culture. And uh, people can give feedback or can point out something that's not going right. And uh, it can help change something. And usually somebody from outside can see something you know, uh, which maybe the people in that team or within that ministry are not seeing. So uh, it's a healthy thing to do, but it all depends on how, what's the culture in the organization, right? At APC, we welcome it, like between our teams, right? So we have that, uh, like on our staff meetings, it's like anybody can say anything about any other ministry in our staff meetings. Uh, it's an open communication we can share or, um, uh, or anybody can send me an email about something, and then we will try to sort it out. You know, yeah. So on the chat, this is how to handle conflict with church staff and congregation. Church staff and congregation. Um, yeah. So I think so. There, you know, the 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 good thing to do is to get the people involved, get them together uh, in a personal meeting and talk to all of them and uh, you know listen to both sides and try to you know sort things out you know I, I, uh, uh, so example just this past week um, actually was it which date was it I, on uh, Monday Monday or Tuesday so this this week so what happened is we um, you know, for our worship team, we have auditions uh, for people who want to join the worship team. And uh, we normally don't do auditions for children 
you know, uh, we only do auditions for the adult worship team that's above 18. But for this, uh, and, and in the past, we've had Christmas uh, events, uh, and whenever children were involved, there was no audition, just all children, you come on stage and sing. You know, that's always how it's been. But this year, uh, we were planning for this Christmas concert, but it was something different we are trying out, trying out a new idea. And part of the new idea was to see if children can also be part of the Christmas choir, but it was going to be different because they had to sing for one hour. It's not like you come and sing one song and go, or two songs and go, which was what we had done in the past. But this was like, it's going to be a one hour continuous uh, you know, uh, Christmas choir presentation. So the worship team felt that we sh they should audition. They would audition everyone who wants to be part of the choir, which means even children had to be auditioned. <laughs> we had never done this before. But we're trying something new. But that became a problem. Because, uh, you know, of course, children had to come and audition. Who want to sing? And there was, uh, you know, okay, I, I think most parents were okay with it. For, uh, so, but one couple was so upset. He got very upset. And, um, and sadly, their child did not get selected. So that made matters very, they were very upset. So they sent, uh, you know, very strong worded messages, uh, WhatsApp messages to our worship team. And uh, they tried to call and explain like, hey, the reason we wanted to have audition is because we're doing something different. We needed the children to also be of a certain level and we had it's a one hour thing it's not one song you know they tried to explain it. then i got the messages on monday was it monday um monday or tuesday i, forget. I think it's sorry yeah yeah it was tuesday so this happened on the weekend and then on tuesday i got both the husband and wife sent me those messages i was oh so I know, so I, I, I'm trying to see both sides, right? I'm trying to understand, okay, the worship team has a reason why they are doing this. We have never done this before, to have audition for children, I understand, but there's a reason why they're doing it. But I'm also understanding the parents' side. The parents are saying, it's a Christmas celebration. Why are you having audition for children? Just let them go and sing. You know, it's a, it's a time to celebrate. Why are you making it so stressful? And they're also right. From both sides, they have the reasons. Now, in this particular case, because I know the couple, uh, I didn't call them to the office. I just said, hey, can I talk to both of you on the phone? So we got on a conference call. And uh, I just listened. So like 40 minutes, I was just listening. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but so both of the, I just let them, let them tell, share their heart, you know. Uh, it was just uh, a lot of hurt and a lot of, a lot of a lot of things. Just okay. Just listen. Yeah. And trying to understand, you know, how the parents were feeling about this and all that. Okay. But you know, um, and I just said a few lines at the end, saying, "See, this is the reason why." It, I know it, will, it is the first time we're doing something like audition for children, but this is a reason why we are doing it. But I will take your feedback and I'll give it to the worship team. And I'll, I'll do it. And I did that. Anyway, so after the call. Sorry, I think this happened on Monday, and yeah, I think the call, all this thing happened on Monday, and Tuesday I gave feedback to the worship team. Yeah, so, uh, you know, so in this particular situation, a call like this and just listening and trying to understand their position and giving feedback, saying, hey, okay, what, is, what has happened has happened, we can't change it, but don't do it again. Right? For from, the, from now on, the future, don't have audition for children. Okay, we've done it once, it's a mistake. I mean, we had some reasons, but maybe it's not a good idea. Don't do it again. Uh, and because parents have, you know, parents are feeling like this. And uh, we should not do it and all that. So I give feedback. So they also received it. So that will just be, you know, Chaya, that's one example of how you try to handle. I'm not saying this is the only way to handle it, but this is one example. Like this, you know, depending on the situation, 
uh, we have to uh, handle it different different ways. Okay, All right, let's go for a break. We'll come back in ten minutes, and uh, I know there's some more questions. We'll take it up. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> 